Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 264, 8 8 2023. That'd be August 8th. Uh, we were just having a conversation about how did uh, how did October end up being the 10th month and all that kind of stuff. So if you missed out, that means you weren't here before the meeting. You don't get that as part of the recording. Uh, and by the way, meeting, these meetings are recorded for those of you that are watching it as opposed to in person. We have all kinds of fun conversations in person. So if you want to join us, uh, you're welcome to. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. We're new to the roll call. Welcome, all of you. Greetings. Uh, and then we're going to have a quick update about Wix 402. Uh, then we'll do the issue triage. We'll probably skip a couple of them because a couple of them are about a whip discussion and the things that Bob is working on with default symbols. And then we'll take questions, comments, other things that those of you are, that are with us right here, right now can discuss. So let me just keep rolling with this and talk about the Wix 402 update. All right, we're not doing it today. Um, I just bumped it out a couple of weeks. It's a lot of this is driven. We have a very large customer fire giant that's doing a gigantic, huge pass over a whole lot of stuff. And they found a couple things that were off in the deep, dark edges that were really strange behaviors that we have straightened out. So releasing a 402 before they finish just lines us up to have them do a 403 right around the yet. And there's just no benefit to it. Um, there are also a couple, I used to say embarrassing bugs in here, but honestly, we're not taking embarrassing bugs in 402. We're taking the bad bugs like, oh yeah, that just does not work. Um, and we have a couple of those in 402 two that will come in um yeah things that just don't work it's kind of the bar for what is um that slip to august 22 mostly arbitrary but another couple of weeks feels about right um it could slip again um the the real kicker and i say this mostly for me not for you uh we're not taking other things in 402 that aren't really really bad bugs so like for a second, I thought I was going to take this fix to fix an error message where the wrong word was in the error message. And I was like, no, 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 that'll be in four. That'll be in five. It is in fix. It is in fix in five. All that kind of good stuff. So anyway, that's the status of 402. A um, couple of bad bugs, and it will be out as soon as we get that huge, big um, pass done. Because we don't really want to do a 403 if we don't need to. So that's kind of the thing that's going on 402. Uh, you know, probably before the end of the month. That's my thinking. All right. That's 402. Oh, wait, I deleted the triage. Where did the triage thing go? Oh, triage. <laughs> My slides are out of order. Bob, we're going to do triage. Then we'll come back and talk about those things I just skipped over in the slide deck. Uh, you ready? Okay, I, I don't know. I, I work entirely by slide order, so this is really confusing me. <laughs> All right, let's go over to triage and we'll come back. Ta-da, triage. Uh, we have, what, six issues here, but two of them are were reopened by Bob to uh, talk about them, which is the default root directory and the uh, main, default major upgrade. We're gonna talk about those next. Uh, so let's talk about this thing that is already fixed here. Uh, doing action, uh, let's see, number 7632, Wix 3 to Wix 4 upgrade, getting an error using uh, Wix configure SMB, yada, yada, yada. And it started as a discussion. Bob, you turned this into an issue. And I believe you have fixed it. Yep. Because there are no workarounds. There are this. no workarounds. And some bugs do not have workarounds. And this is network file share element is busted? Correct. Yeah. File share element is busted because of this custom action not being fully updated in all of the updates that need to happen from V3 to V4. Uh, this is a gap in the overall testing of Wix. We don't have full coverage for all the custom actions executing which is a problem so we have to actually execute you can imagine all the kinds of things you could do with wix all the kinds of stuff that you'd have to test is uh pretty daunting so uh, if someone want to take those things on and help out that'd be great uh otherwise yeah we're probably going to find some of these in the wild instead of you know in our unit tests unfortunately but uh that happens sometimes so anyway um bob and i had already chatted about it and We'll take it 402 because it's so blocking that we'll toss it in 402 as well. Right? Works for me. All right. So there we go. 402. Yay. Uh, 7657. Document util registry remove registry key EX. It's a new element. Should have some documentation. It is a new element, and it has no documentation. I was just reading what was set down here. All right, cool. And Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, there, there's, um, I, I thought we made a pass um, because there were some other, uh, other elements added to the, especially the util uh, Wix extension, it being the kind of the, the catch-all extension. Um, you know, for example, we have the touch file, um, custom action, uh, we have format file, which I wrote and is really, really cool. Not just because I wrote it, but because of the functionality. Um, and it looks like most of those are there, but we missed this one. Probably because the name is like the other names. Um, and I mean, it's it's in the compiler extension. It it we yeah. should have noticed it. Yeah. There's already things called remove registry keys, so or remove registry. Yeah. Anyway, that is true. Uh, not it. Perhaps the person who implemented this functionality should document it who did it you did really i wrote yeah. this i have yeah. no, no memory of it fine give it to me i'll look at it it's on the website so we could take a fix to it at a time anytime yes agreed so all right interesting i guess we'll just drop it at five even though it doesn't really matter but we do have a web oh yeah web, web 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 you're right web milestone that's where it goes very good huh all right uh, invalid language uh, seven six five eight invalid language ID for Z H Han T. Yes, so one of these uh, newer languages, believe it or not, this is a, a newer LSID in the world. The you can tell it has five digits. Those are generally newer. Um, the ICE doesn't like that number. I guess everything seems to install correctly. I don't. You know, I haven't tried installing there, but the issue is that the ICE. So the only fix is for us to uh, re-implement this ICE, which we've talked about um, doing. This one is particularly yeah. <laughs> uh, large. ISO 3 is a very large sweeping. It's one. very broad and very slow. So if we were to re-implement it, we'd get a lot of wins because we could avoid one of the slowest ICEs. Yep. On the other hand, it does so much that re-implementing it would be a yep. major undertaking. But I think this goes up for grabs. And anybody that wants to start working in this space, that would be great. There's a lot of this. I mean, enough that we talked about this icebreaker, icebreaker project. Ooh, icebreaker project to go through and just kind of sweep and re-implement all the ICEs as nice errors and warnings inside Wix and then stop running validation. It is non-trivial amount of work. And probably the only way it's going to be done is to chip away at it like a block of ice, a little piece by piece. Hence the name. So uh, there we go. That is, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Or, you know, Microsoft could fix it and send out an ICE plus fix the other problems they have in their ICEs. That would be good, too. Um, I'd settle for them open sourcing the ICEs so that we could fix them ourselves. Oh, and... gosh. I wonder if we could go lean on them to do that. I don't know. That, I mean, th that's going to be the... That would be so helpful. <laughs> it, 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 it would help. It would help. I mean, I still think the the best results are, you know, getting out of the the ice model because even if oh, we yeah yeah no, I'm saying it'd be helpful so we can see what they do and oh them. certainly that yeah 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 <laughs> that's it yeah I, after that I don't care it's like yeah well uh. it, it it changes the amount of work um, but yeah that's true the ices are not the ice documentation is not a spec no. Um, it, some of it is, is well written enough that you could reverse engineer it, mm -hmm. but there are many ICEs that aren't documented well enough to, to safely say that we've re-implemented. Yeah. Anyway, it'd be fantastic. If someone wanted to like start chipping away at those, that like, that's a, that's a great problem. I don't even know how hard it is really. It's kind of like grab an ICE, try to make it fail and then go write an error message for it. I mean, it's just yep. one little piece out of another. If someone want to do that, I'd be happy to get you set up and work on that project. But it'd be a nice little thing you could do every once in a while. Just, hey, I've got a little bit more. And a nice long list of ICEs, you could just start checking them off. It's a little satisfying. If I didn't have so many other more important things to do, that would be quite satisfying. Just check some things off. Anyway, uh, 7662, package scope. XSD doesn't allow for process preprocessor variables. That's sad. Probably should. 
Um, yeah, another XSD update. Right? Uh, yeah. All right. Are you taking this one? She should do this, right? All right. You took the other one, I uh, suppose. I was like, I could take this one too if you don't want. Nah, yes, no type union. Different XSD at least. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, we'll get that no, fixed it's in the still web project. the big XSD. Yeah, that's true. All right. All right. Page not found. Error 217. Really? I thought. Oh, well. All right. Page URL that linked to this. No response. Oh, I guess they, they chose not to put a response there. Hmm, okay. All right. We're missing this page. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't, didn't look. I thought we had a redirect. But the... Okay, so the real problem is that the Wix three message is just wrong, mm. right? The uh, the incorrectly registered scripting engine was, you know, uh, I don't know, a Windows ninety five thing. No, not that bad. Not that bad. I know, I know. I'm just, it, but it was, it's, it was, it's very old. It is an I old mean, problem it's, now. It's like XP. Yeah. I feel like it happened yeah. later than that too, because there's a per user reg way of registering per user that would end up taking yeah. over. But but it's it's not as common now. That's certainly true. Well, I don't think it can happen anymore. Oh yeah, in Windows 10 world, yeah, probably not. I don't I don't think it survived very long after after then. But anyway, irrelevant. So you know, so I'm kind of like, do we still refer to this today in Wix four? The answer is no. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't do something. If anything, we need to we need the page to retroactively correct the the error message because it's you know wrong. Seems reasonable. So, goes in the web milestone. Someone needs to go right. Whatever that is. Yep. All right. Not it. I don't even know. <laughs> I'll take what, it. I'll what is this? It. This is ice one failing. Is this just like the ice is not running because of all the multitude yeah, of reasons that usually come down to like the user's not allowed to run MSI? It, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah okay. it's, this, by today, the way, the most common has nothing to do with scripting engine. It's all about, um, you know, running in a CI system without elevated privileges which or a user not being able to run services or something like that or installs like there's there's something there too um yeah so this by the way is the bottom of the icebreaker project this this the fact that this can happen and the ISIS could fail in this way is the reason why it's like yeah this is really the the main reason to get rid of them the second reason is that it would probably make wix build times much much faster Absolutely. because you wouldn't run validation which is for small msis the small the largest part of the build I wonder how much time I spent in Deployment Dojo waiting for the build to finish. That's actually spent in ICES and not in the build of the... Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, no, absolutely. Probably, probably three-fourths of it is ICE validation. Fortunately, usually I have to talk about what I'm doing, and I've learned to kick the build off, go talk about it, and see the success in the background. Anywho, uh, there is a Deployment Dojo show tomorrow, if you guys want to show up, and that's at noon over on my channel. So, all right, I yeah, think we got through triage. That just leaves us these top two, top two, yes, top two issues uh, to talk about. Um, I can now jump back and forth between the two uh, places, I guess. Let's see. Do you want to discuss the issue? Uh, uh, or the, uh, you know, I'm going to go back to the slide. I'm going to go back to the slide, and then we can, uh, let's see, go back to the slide. There we go. And we will talk our way through the discussion items, which are those uh, bugs. And then Bob, I'll let you decide uh, whether we switch back and forth between the issues and things like that. So I think we'll be, we'll be okay. We won't need to switch. All right. All right. Uh, these are your things. You take lead and uh, we'll follow along. Okay. Uh, first one is the default install folder. I've actually submitted a PR for this. Um, but while I was testing it, I realized there's a missing, uh, well, uh, there, there's a gap and I, don't know how serious it is. Um, what happens today is that you can refer to this new magic install folder uh, without needing to define it. But 
it's a little weird because this is essentially now a, a standard directory, but standard directory element does not work with it. Um, you can still do a directory ref to install folder, but it seems to me that it's fairly important that install folder work with standard directory. And I just wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, I was a little, it, I, I, this is one of those I probably did not need to bring this back. I should have just done it. But, you know, I only realized it after I'd already done the work. So um, I think I brought it back just so I can say, look, I'm volunteering to go do more work. <laughs> I, I I think that's true. Um, I think you're right that it should be listed in the install folder. Uh, the install folder should be listed in the standard directory uh, option of the element, but it cannot be declared a standard directory inside Wix, it, it, like in the system. It is not sure, a sure. standard Windows installer. No, no, it's very internally. It's very different. Um, right. Okay. Externally, I guess. Um, however, it's it's yeah it's very very similar so yeah basically standard directory element is like all the standard directories plus this one and all and because if you change the standard directories they have behaviors inside wix yeah. that will kick in that you do not want kicked in on this one that is correct yeah, that yeah no it's it's it, so standard directory also from from an you know from a non implementer perspective is a directory ref and that's the behavior we want for install folder right Yes, that makes sense. Okay, um, there, there's more to come in bullet three and four. So, but yeah. we can go on to bullet two now. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, so when I started, I put together the whip for the default major upgrade behavior. Um, this turned into way more of a project than I had anticipated, <laughs> unfortunately. And that's why we write the whips. Uh, because this uncovered just a number of issues. Um, so the first one is is when it comes to changes in behavior. Um, yeah, this is a Wix 5 feature. So technically, going from Wix 4 to Wix 5 is a major upgrade. Semver says, oh, major version change. We can do whatever we want. Um, but sometimes, yeah, behavior changes aren't great. Um, so in, in the whip, I point out that the way this works is we would essentially always be providing major upgrade behavior if you provide an upgrade code, which today technically you don't have to do, but you get a you know, very stern warning saying you should provide an upgrade code. Um, so my question, and this is, yeah, up for discussion is, is that change in behavior always getting major upgrade support something that is acceptable? Or do we need to provide a way to suppress that? You know, command line switch, MS build property, something like that. It's unusual, but in general, Wix has let you author any kind of MSI package as long as it's legal. And with this change, we would not let you upgrade a legal MSI package that omitted major upgrade support, even if that's just a silly thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I didn't have strong enough feelings, or maybe I had strong feelings, but they were in conflict. So I don't, I don't have a good answer to that. Yeah, it. I can't think of a reason, but it might be important to be able to not have a major upgrade in MSI. Right. Well, but it's so. So the scenario is you have an upgrade code, but no major upgrade behavior. Yeah. No. You, yeah. You should always have an upgrade code. That's important for lots of reasons. The and the question is that scenario always have an upgrade code. Honestly, we should probably make it required. Um, it's that important. Um, I'm curious about that. Why, why is it important if you don't have major upgrades? It's one of the ways you could find an MSI in the machine and you don't sure. know until later that you needed to find it. So the ability to have that is very useful. Yeah. 
Sorry, oh. I, I don't. Obviously, I agree. Sorry, I mean, it has it has only benefits and no downsides that we probably should just make it required. I think. Okay, it, I see. I see it, that, okay. that where major upgrade has lots of benefits, but maybe, but it also has all these behaviors that maybe there's a scenario where you don't want them. Right. I can't think of it without otherwise specifying some other upgrade logic. Well, so. Yeah, unfortunately, the scenarios that I can imagine are the weird ones, like where you've suppressed register product or something, and you're just using MSI as a delivery vehicle for, you know, probably not actual files. Maybe it's just custom actions. Yeah. Um, again, it's legal. Wix lets you do it. We'd be suppressing that if you pro also provide an upgrade code. There has to be some way of turning off major upgrade. Okay. Um, right. I, I've thrown out that idea before of declaring your upgrade behavior on the package element. Right. Mostly in a way that the primary purpose of that would help us then to generate a package code for you more correctly. Product code. Uh, sorry, a product code. What did I say? Package code? A yeah. product code more correctly. That scared me. Um, package codes are always generated. Uh, a product code more correctly so that you don't have to do it yourself, essentially. Um, yeah. Maybe that helps get the default major upgrade working. Because that could then be used to say no major upgrade or without major upgrade or something. Basically, it'd be the okay. bit you're missing of yeah, yeah, I, I have a very special upgrade semantics and I've declared it on my package with my, you know, the element. And the default for that, of course, is major upgrade, which then, of course, gives you the default attribute and everything works. And that's what most people expect. And you, everything just turns out to be fine. But you can turn it off. But then there's another in that enum set of enums that you could like, you know, upgrade. I don't know what the word is because I haven't thought about it deeply, but, you know, my, right. my upgrade semantics are 100% custom. Right, whatever that you know, custom yeah. manual, whatever it is. So yeah, great. I am now going to take over the package code and all the upgrade semantics on all those things. Product code. Pro product code. Sorry, I don't want to keep saying package because the package <laughs> element now instead of the product element. So I keep yeah, seeing right, it right, right, as right. Uh, anyway. Um, that might be the solution there, just to bring that yeah. attribute in. Okay. The problem so, is we haven't talked about even much less specked out what that logic is we could introduce it to you know provide the boolean that essentially lets you turn off this default major upgrade yeah and then I, enhance it in wix 6 yeah yeah or yeah like like i Based on this discussion, I'd say, let me explore that. So two pieces of things that I would say. One, I think we should not force all MSIs to have major upgrades. Okay. Um, and then two, to meet that, maybe consider this other feature concept, undeveloped feature concept, as the way to get the ability to not force a major upgrade every time. So to get the default major upgrade, but not always force it. So that might be the, the dial that we then would also use to add a couple extra clicks to it to give us the other features of, hey, we can now generate your package code in a way that will work properly with major upgrades, for example. Okay. Or minor, it's actually minor upgrades. It's generating your package code in a way that works with minor upgrades. That's the one that's interesting. Product code. <laughs> I'm just going to say product just at random now. Just to... <laughs> Product code. It could generate your product code for you with control, and that might work. So anyway, that even if we don't do all the dials on Wix 5, it might give you the one click you need for turn off major upgrade. Okay. Um, so we should right. go. Cool. I can go give you my notes on that, and then you can decide if that helps you or not, and we'll go from there. But I don't I'm not organized enough to have all those notes here to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, no. I and we've talked about it enough. I think I understand it. Um, I'm just trying to figure so you know, part of what I'm trying to do here is going, Oh, my, it's August. We're running out of time for Wix five. So I'm I'm you know like I, I I think I understand what you're talking about with this upgrade strategy. Yeah. Um but the full thing is 
you know, just uh, no, no, can't do that. Can't do that in work five. There's just you know, not enough time given the other things that I want to get done. Um, but that's why I'm like, okay, so if we can do a, you know, a subset that, um, you know, that gives us the, the, the thing we have to have um, while leaving it open for, you know, quick six or whenever. Right. right. And that's something worth looking at. Yep. Um, so the other thing about this yep. particular feature is, is the, the localization. Mm-hmm. Um, the way I looked at it, um, we, you know, essentially we'd have to provide a built-in Wixel file yep. and then it, that starts to complicate lives. Um, we're providing a, a default Wixel file, but I only fluently speak English with a side of Klingon. There's, you know, we're not going to be able to provide a full set of error messages uh, for every language that we support in, say, Wix UI. Um, so, so should the Wixel file have ENUS as the culture? Um, if what it if it doesn't have the culture? Generated? I really don't like that. I really don't like that. It's the only option if we want to provide them. That yeah, seems the, to be because the alternative is we can not put a culture on it, but that means that English will show up in other languages, and that's probably worse. They can always provide their own Wixel file, correct? Sure. So at least there's that. Look, yeah. I'm not. The question is, is it better to machine translate English into all the other languages or to throw in English into all languages that don't matter, that we don't have? Okay. Uh, so. Both are pretty bad options. I, 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 <laughs> not being able to speak other languages well makes it where yeah. we're at. Like we could just ask everybody to, hey, please come up. I know we have at least uh, two different languages in chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm at least two. Um, but that's only two more if they were to go through and give right, us a message. Right. We need a whole lot more people to show up at chat. Or, you know, maybe we could get and respond on, you know, a discussion item. It's like, hey, here's the sentence. Please, all of you that understand these languages, translate them. Or here, here's the machine generated list. Please review if you can. Yeah. 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 The problem is Wix UI came with 40. Yeah. So that's that's a tough call, even if it's just for now one string. Um, also, the the culture culture gets complicated because of the MS build behavior of creating subdirectories with different cultures from one build, and I wasn't sure how we wanted to deal with with that, um, especially because we're talking about. You know, the, the culture thing is an MS buildism. Um, this needs to work, you know, from MS build and from Wix.exe and whatever else. So mm -hmm. if if we do do the machine translation, then every Wixel gets a culture. And how do we, you know, do we start enforcing the MS build culture subdirectory approach even for command line? And that doesn't, no, doesn't no, no. make any sense. No, no, no. The, the, no. Just having the, the cultures available does not force you to build in all those languages. That's a decision that they well, that the user that, provides. No. MS, if if you provide a Wixel file in, in MS build, if you provide a Wixel file, you get the subdirectory, even if it's just one Wixel. Like the, yes. the template out of Heatwave. Oh, I, I thought we would do it the same way that we do it for extensions, or we, we would just grab the Wixel and it would match whatever you used. It did not force another language then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, that didn't occur to me. All right, that, that to me is like the only way to do that is the Wixel files is treated the same way Wixel files are treated inside extensions. It lives inside Wix and then the, well, you're building your Messiah, we grab the appropriate Wixel file out of the, the mm -hmm. mix. 
the way extensions. I, mean, do. I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to there. Extensions have to provide a default localization mm-hmm. or default culture, rather. Mm-hmm. So extensions already declare a culture. Yeah, but they also provide Wixel files in them that will get selected, will get filtered based off of whatever the user is building. Okay. Anyway, there are issues mm-hmm. um, with cultures. Um, Default language was uh, providing a Wixel file inside Wix was always going to be an interesting. Yeah, future. yeah, yeah. Yeah. This I thought was the hardest part of major upgrade. <laughs> yeah. The silly error miss. Well, it always yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is is. why burn then, doesn't have any. Yeah, it tries right. not to have any. Yeah. Um, and then supporting multiple languages is obviously a you know highly desirable feature, but it adds even more complexity. So, um, yeah. which basically I think leads us into bullet number three. Yep, that's the perfect segue into bullet yep. three, which is why when you described all of these different issues, I was getting down to I'm like. Maybe we just ship a standard Wix lib as part of Wix that has all these yep. things built into it. Yep. And then it occurred to me that having a standard Wix lib um, makes it easier for us to do some of these default things. Like today, because I sent a pull request for default install folder, right? And today, the way that works, and for default feature as well. And in both of those cases, I conjure up a symbol Mm -hmm. and add it to the set of symbols that are, are being worked on, Mm -hmm. which is fine because there's some logic involved, certainly for, for the default feature, there's logic involved, but it turns out for default directory. Well, now there might be some because of standard directory, but otherwise there's no special logic. It's just, if I could provide a symbol in a built-in Wixlib, then I wouldn't have to do special magic in the linker to create that symbol. Yep. Same thing would be true for the default feature. Yep. And also likely for the major upgrade. Um, but yep. at the end of the day, the, the 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 logic that I would have to add would just be to determine whether to do something or not. Whether create a reference or not. In the end, it should just be creating references. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yep. Today, it's usually a reference and a symbol, or a reference symbol and some other more concrete symbol. But yeah, if I could just say, oh yeah, okay, add a reference to the default feature, and it ships in the Wix lib, and Wix would just find it normally, and we wouldn't have to do anything like this. Yeah, that's why I like the idea of it. Plus, you'd also get the the Wixel behavior that come with Wix libs, which is right, why I think right. localization works as well. The whole thing yep. just stacks. Like, hey, we solved this problem with Wix libs. Yep. We should just use right. them. <laughs> so the problem with using a standard Wix lib, of course, is that when those symbols are included, uh, uh, when that Wix lib is included, all those symbols become available, and that means they now collide with the rest of the world. So that's a perfect segue, Rob. Thank you into bullet number four, um, which is overridable symbols. Today, you can, you can mark a few things in Wix as overridable. Um, Loke strings are one of them, right? So all of the, the strings in Wix UI are marked as overridable equals yes. And if you want to override that string, you add it to your own Wixel file and say overridable equals no, or omit overridable, same thing. And that string overrides the one that is overridable. Um, we also do that with custom action scheduling. So you do, you know, install execute sequence, and then your child is custom action ref, or custom, should be custom action ref. Today it's just custom. Um, and that lets you override the scheduling of a custom action that is scheduled in an extension. Um, it's not, some of, some of it, it's rare. You don't usually need to do this, but you can move some of the custom actions around 
um, if you want to, you know, say, add your own custom action that has to happen before or after one of your custom actions. Um, I don't know if there are any others. No, it's but, standard so, actions. It's standard actions that are overridable. Um, maybe it's just both? To, yeah, it's standard actions are overridable too. I, I'd forgotten about standard actions because you could like change okay. it. You could change the oh, the, yeah, the sequence or the the condition on a standard action. That's right. That's right. I have totally so, forgot that those are the same thing. Yeah, I the the symbol is Wix Wix action symbol. So yeah, that should have been a clue. Um, yeah, so so it is possible to reschedule these things without um, oh, with, without having to redefine anything. Oh man, that makes this even better feature. Yeah. So, what if in addition to actions, custom and standard, you could also reschedule or you could also mark, say, a directory is overridable. If we could put the default install folder marked overridable in the standard Wix lib, then that is the end of that feature. Today, the, the pull request already sent has to conjure the symbol um, when there's a reference that isn't otherwise. There's logic involved in doing it. But if we could provide an overridable default symbol, then things would just work. Oh, this feature's so good. Yep. Um, it, it It's not perfect. You know, like the default feature would still need some logic. Um, yeah, because you have so to look up the component groups and all that. I mean, that one's more yeah, magical. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's more magic involved. Um, and that's fine. Oh, man. But again, we, the standard Wix lib helps that out. It simplifies that code. But yeah, the default install folder could just disappear. There'd be no code to make it work. Overridable symbols probably aren't that hard. They're they're really not. Because um, we already have the access modifiers on them. So just adding another bit to make them overridable. <coughs> and then we sure. already have the logic that deals with overridable in a couple places. So th that's not hard. We it's already hard have the error handling. It's, when it comes to symbols, there's only one place we we mess around with it. Yeah, there's just one place that it has to be dealt with. Right. Um, and it, and the the algorithm for doing so is not terribly difficult, as, as was my point. Yeah. Yep. Um, because we already have that algorithm written for Wixel files. Oh man, this is a really good feature. This is a really good feature. Um, the downside is that it's not scheduled work. It's discovered work. And I don't know if I can still do naked files with, you know, with the time remaining in the year and implement this feature and re-implement the other features I've already, already written. All right. Um, let's table this for a moment. The fact that this is that good. I have to think about it a little bit. Yep. Me too. Me too. Because that, that, oh, man, it would just clean up all of our action handling as well. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. I mean, it, it is a generally useful feature beyond what, you know, we're talking about here. Um, but it's not, it even, fits. it's not even generally useful. It's generally correct. I like the correctness of it. It already exists in a certain places. Right. And they are all done with specialized hacks. This would get yep. rid of those specialized hacks and just be a ta da. Yeah. It's not a hack if it's a feature. That's right. Uh, yeah. Hey, code. Welcome to Wix tool set meeting. Uh, we don't generally do support for uh, Wix during this meeting. We talk about what's going on in development of Wix, but just real quick answer to you is if uh, to get started with using Visual Studio or Wix in Visual Studio, go install Heatwave. It's up on the Visual Studio Marketplace, or you can search for it inside Visual Studio. Uh, install Heatwave, and it will give you everything you need to get going. Um, all right. There's some pretty good getting started docs. Too. And there's documentation for getting started with Heatwave. If you look for Fire Giant Heatwave, you will find everything you need to get started with uh, using Visual Studio and Wix together. All right. Uh, I think that's where we'll pin this discussion because that's such a cool 
thing. I'm going to have to go dig in. I have to think about that. That I didn't think that it was, I'd forgotten that actions behave that way. And the fact mm-hmm. that it would clean up the actions, there's a lot of ickyish code in there. There's a lot of just, just, just a, there's just a lot of code handling all that. And it could make actions more like standard. Um, oh, wait, standard directories could work the same way. Sure. Oh, the direct, all oh, the directories would work the same way. Yeah. With the default names in them. You could override program files folder's default name with your own symbol for program files folder. Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is such a, uh, why didn't we think of this before? Yeah, this is such a good feature. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. It, it Code, it is easy to install. Just open Visual Studio, go to extensions, search for Heatwave, install it. You are... You will have it and the templates and all that kind of good stuff. It's, that's it. Much like VS Code, but not for VS Code. All right. Okay. We're going to pin this. We'll be back. Other things people want to talk about. We've started, started doing questions for code, getting started. Basically, install Heatwave in Visual Studio and you're good to go. Anybody else things they want to talk about? Ron, Zach, uh, Lost, oh, Bert, guys, people, uh, Eliana, people that are here want to talk about things, questions they have, stuff going on, uh, other things out there. Let's see. Um, we'll be back in two weeks. I think that's pretty normal, which would be the 22nd, which is uh, at that point, if everything's going, we are actually doing pushing the buttons to make Wix uh, 402 go up if things go well. We'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, Bob's now got my head spinning around this whole standard lib where I thought it was like, this is a cool idea. Now it's just not cool. It feels like correct. Oh, man. All right. Other things people were talking about going on, stuff like that they want to discuss. I'm just kind of filling space, giving people time to type. Um, yeah, so Wix 5 development is where we're at. Reviewing bugs, getting things going forward. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's anything else. It's pretty quiet. Otherwise, it's it's summer and people are just writing bits of code and those kinds of good things. Um, fixing the nastiest of the four bugs and... I am have not yet, but need to sit down and take burn apart and put it back together with the whole external BA thing. So there's that. All right. Uh, on GitHub, so Wix, go to wixtoolset.org. There's a place on wixtoolset.org in the docs and getting started of places to go ask questions. Uh, most of it's on GitHub discussions these days. Uh, that's where people are hanging out. All right. Um, if you have questions, go to wixtoolset.org. That's a general good idea. There, search the internet for Wix toolset and you'll find that. All right. Okay. I think that's that. We will be back in two weeks. That's August 22nd at this time slot again. Uh, if things are going, 402 may be happening in the background, being uploaded and all that kind of good stuff or building whatever stage we'll be in at this time. And that's all I got. Bob, anything else for you? I'm good. All right. Two weeks, everybody. Take it easy. Keep coding. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.